We have a 2016 Dodge Journey with a four-cylinder. Uh, customer said that she thinks it has a blown head gasket. It's been spittering, sputtering, and wants me to look at it. So first thing that I'm going to do is pull the radiator cap off. I see there's no fluid in it. Now it won't even go back on. Open up the overflow tank, nothing in it. I pull out the dipstick and we got chocolate milk. So definitely has a cracked head gasket. That would be the best case scenario at this point and not a cracked head. So uh, I'm gonna pull the valve cover off. I'm gonna pull the timing chain cover off, get all the timing marks aligned and start pulling apart the, uh, start taking off the head. So follow along. To get the coils out, you need a Torx head T30. Just get them all loose. Unplug them. Pull back the little orange thing. Push down. Release. Once you get your coil packs out, you want to start taking anything that's attached to the valve cover off. Hmm. Some are going to be a little bit tighter than others. That's your fuel rail. And once you get all your uh, hoses off, then you can start unbolting the valve cover itself. For me, I think I'm going to clean the valve cover up a little bit before I turn it off, uh, before I take it off. And that will help prevent getting dirt into the head itself. Even though I'm taking the head off, I still don't want to get it all nasty. This valve cover is an 8 millimeter all the way around. And don't forget you have a cup one in the middle. And once you get that off, you can see what the, you can see what the camshafts look like and see how bad the internal of the engine is. With the valve cover off, you can definitely see the signs of the blown head gasket. So, the darkness here is normal. But once you see this creamy stuff up top, I call it chocolate milk. That is antifreeze coolant that is getting into the oil by the cracked head gasket. So, 100% sure it is a cracked head gasket. Now, it could possibly be additional damage by a cracked head. And I won't know that until I take this entire head off. So I started removing the wiring and it's now coming up to the fuel injectors. And for those who don't know how to take the fuel injector lines off, or the fuel injector, yeah, plugs off, you have to get a little screwdriver in underneath that red cap and pull it straight up. And then once it's released like that, you can then push it in and pull out. But until that red cap comes up, they won't come out. To get the intake off, there are five 13 millimeters that take it off. I took off the fuel rail and I was able to see the 13 millimeters up top. And then there's just plain to see the 13 millimeters on the bottom because the middle one actually goes through the intake itself, which is right there that's the the middle bottom and then on the very bottom there are two 10 millimeters that you need one and two to take off the bracket from the bottom i found it easier to get under the car right here at the bracket i found it easier to get under the car and stick my head up to pull that bracket off first you got to take off the intake pipe get that out of the way in order to get to the two 10 millimeters once you take all that off it just slides right out and once it starts coming out you can disconnect your your uh, throttle body you can disconnect your vacuum and your return fuel line before I come over here and work on the timing side I'm going to drain the coolant because when I pull the head off I'm gonna have to coolant's gonna go everywhere anyways so to drain the coolant on one of these it's kind of backwards normally you would have a plug sitting over here 
on any normal car, but on the Dodge Journey, it's on the front side over in this back corner and it just unscrews. You'll be able to see exactly how much coolant is left in this thing. <laughs> no coolant at all. Straight water. That's definitely not a good sign. To gain better access to the bottom of your engine, just take a 19 millimeter, take that tire off. Then you have to take this like little piece of plastic back here out. And it gives you access to the whole bottom of the engine. With your tire off, take your 10 millimeter, take your two screws out here and here, take that plastic off, and then we're gonna start working on getting that serpentine belt off next. All right, to get the serpentine belt off, you're gonna see three pulleys. The top one here, there's the top one, a middle one, which is there, and I don't even know if I can get focused on it. There's a bottom one. So you're going to get the middle one. Once you get to the middle one, it's a 16 millimeter. And you pull up. And once you pull up, you can take your belt right off. So when it comes to the taking everything off, the upper motor mount, the upper power steering hose that goes down to your rack and pinion is in the way. So I can either take off the whole pump or just unscrew it here and unscrew it there and call it good. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it, it, I would lose all the power steering fluid, but you know, who cares at this point. But I find that that's going to be my easier option. From there, I'm starting to remove the upper and lower radiator hose and upper and lower heater core lines. So you gotta take them two off and the front two off. And all the lines that go into your uh, camshaft sensor, camshaft sensor, you gotta take them off. Knock sensor, uh, water temp sensor, all of these just have to come off and set off to the side. If you want to, you can disconnect everything and just set the whole wiring loom off to the side, but I'm not, I'm just gonna do what I can do. On the back side, you have four 13 millimeters to take the exhaust flange off for your exhaust pipe. Uh, I plan on just leaving the header on, the manifold on, and take off the head with the manifold. Shouldn't be no harm, no foul. But I'm looking over here at the water pump. It looks like the water pump top bolt right there possibly is going into the head. I'm probably going to have to take out that top bolt or take off the water pump completely in order to get the head off. Next, you're going to have to take off your lower AC pump bracket. It's four 13 millimeters. Three attaches to the motor, one attaches to the pump. And 10 millimeters, three to take off your water pump housing pulley. And then you start taking out all your 10 millimeters and 12 millimeter, 12 mil to take off your uh, timing chain cover and take off your pulley too. You do have to take off your bottom pulley here and what that does it shows a 10 millimeter behind it but this is a 16 millimeter nut. You gotta remove this idler pulley 16 millimeter nut to get to that 10 millimeter. Here it is. So, you do have to take off your tensioner pulley. I tried just taking off the, the wheel itself, but this 10 millimeter here was still stuck behind the lip right here, and you just couldn't get it out. So two 13 millimeters, you can see right there, two 13 millimeters, and that just pops right off. So don't worry about the wheel. If you do need to take the wheel off, it's reverse thread, so remember, righty loose, lefty tight, and the crankshaft is a 22 mil. A little tip to get these three 10 millimeter bolts off, shove a pry bar behind it, and don't pull, I mean don't, don't pull hard, just put enough pressure on it 
where it stops the pulley from spinning and you can take them nuts off. It does not take a lot of pressure. If you put too much pressure on it, you can bend the pulley wheel. Not a good thing. The other thing you can do is take a pair of uh, vice grips, lock it on, and then do it because it's going to rub, rub against the back of the motor. But I don't like that because it can crush this pulley. So, word of advice. So I did have to take out the expansion tank, which is just 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter. 13 millimeter will hold the uh, power steering on. Combination of thir uh, yeah, 13 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 16 millimeter to hold the upper motor mount on. You can see down here, I have the jack on the lower motor mount. So now all I gotta do is take these three bolts out and this timing cover is ready to come off. Don't forget, near the bottom, there's one little tiny 10 mil that has to come out. If you don't take that out, yep, right there. You're gonna uh, bust your cover trying to take it off. Once you get your upper motor mount off and the one that's attached to the motor, it's all 13 millimeters. And all your bolts are out. You get this little slotted piece down here, right there. What you're gonna do, use that to crack open your uh, I don't even know if I can do it. There we go. Use that to crack it open. And uh, pull that cover right off. I know the head bolts are so tight that our traditional impact wrench isn't doing it. So we broke out the big one. And this thing hits with such power that I've never ever seen it slow down, blink an eye, or anything. And using this still won't break the bolts loose. This is a one inch impact being reduced down to a 3 eighths. Hold that handle. <laughs> oh yeah, it's already, I see it wobbling at the bottom. I can get a fucking hold of it, I'll pop it up. There we, there go. we go. And there we go. Remember the header, exhaust is still on it. Oh wow. So when you take the head off, I forgot to take off two items. One is this little bracket that's on the back of the motor. This bracket goes to the manifold on the back of the engine. It mounts two places on the engine and the rod goes through the bottom of the manifold. The other thing is the water pump. I didn't think I had to take it off. But apparently, because I didn't take off the plastics first, the water pump does have to come off. So, lesson learned. I didn't break nothing. I very gently went over there and did it afterwards. Um, I do recommend always taking your head to the machine shop. So, when you take the head to the machine shop, what they do is they plane it out. Take off, I think they said 2 millimeters on this one. They also pressurized it to make sure it's not a cracked head they vacuum tested it here and they found that two valves uh, came open so they took the valves loose lapped them and put them back in retested it and it was fine so i didn't have to get a valve job all of all compared to what the head looked like coming out this thing is impressively nice looking because it was just a nasty heap of mess coming out before you put your head gasket down, you want to make sure you wipe down and clean and the top of your surface of the head, top of the surface of the engine block as best as you can. Get all the old gasket off all together. And then the new one just lays on top, waiting for the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the sex accessories, I'm going to put the manifold back on, I'm going to put the plastic pipe over here back on. All the uh, cam sensors and stuff like that, all that's going to go back on before I put it in the car. It will save me from bending over trying to do it while it's in. 
once you get your head back on and your head bolts back in now I bought brand new head bolts I don't reuse the old ones they tend to stretch especially with the heat so splurge and get the $77 for a new set it's well worth it you're not gonna kick yourself in the butt next time now your torque specs are gonna be this So, hope everyone can see that just fine. Once it's torqued down, then you can start putting the cams back in. Now that you got your head back on, don't forget to put your little tappet covers over each one. Do that all, and you can go ahead and put your camshafts back in. As I'm putting the head back together, I use assembly lube on everything to make sure that uh, it's going to be well lubricated before we even fire this thing up for the first time after rebuild. So you do it on all your, your points all the way around and I just use, yep. When you put your cams back in, you want to make sure that the line is right there where the crack is. See the, the top crack? If the line matches up, going all the way across, then you know you're lined up. Up here, you have a dot, and over there, you have a dot. It's more like a line. But these are where your cam and your chain meet and match. They do have to be lined up, and the bottom has to be lined up also for everything to work properly. Now you put everything back together the same way you take it apart. Pretty much the same order. So now that it's back together, you, <laughs> you cross your fingers. I had to charge the battery because this car's been sitting for a while. And if it starts, you know you have your timing right. If it doesn't start, you know you have your timing wrong. So. Here we go. My timing was set.